Well, a huge moment this for Lucas Kleckers and indeed the German snooker public who've turned out in force to watch him. No doubt he's been looking forward to this ever since the draw came out. This is a held over match. It's a first round match. that has been pre-qualifying. The uh, top eight seats have been held over. You would like to think his match would have been held over anyway, but here he is. It's into the lion's den a little bit. Of course, Trump will be a heavy favourite, but will home soil inspire him? It's a packed house here on the first night. It's a busy arena as well. We've got seven tables. You can watch tables one to four live on Discovery+. Plus. But you suspect most of the eyes in this arena are going to be on table one here. Judd Trump gets the evening underway and uh, this is always a great week of snooker. It's now extended from five to seven days. There's more tables in the arena, more players here. And Lucas Kleckers is here as well. Big moment for him, Germany's leading player. Last season he reached a ranking quarter-final at the WST Classic. And although it's a tough match as we just uh, watch him play his first shot here, Although it's a tough match, Neil Folds, what a night for the young man. Yeah, very much so. And uh, it's good to think the match is being held over. It might have been played pre-Christmas when uh, the other qualifiers for this uh, were played. But the fact that he's playing Judd Trump, lots of factors why this match is on tonight and it's good to see. Hard match for him, but he is a good player. And, uh, th well, there's plenty going on in here tonight as ever at the Temple Room. It's quite hectic, but it's going to be a fascinating evening. Yeah, it's a big night, isn't it, for everybody here. Luca Brussel, he's been sort of uh, AWOL a little bit this season, hasn't he? We've not seen that much of him, but he's up against Ishpreet Singh Chada from India. Mark Allen playing Manisarwin Fet Malaikul of Thailand. But anyway, Trump first in here. Obviously, we're focusing on table one. And he'll be looking, I'm sure, because he oh, he's aware of the fact that Kleckers is on home, so we'll have a lot of support. He'll want to make a good start here, just Five. impose himself on this match. He won the title back-to-back 2020-2021, -back the latter in Milton Keynes because of the pandemic. But he has won the title here. He beat Neil Robertson in 2020. And, of course, six finals this season, the most recent, the World Grand Prix. Just over a week ago, where Ronnie O'Sullivan beat him 10-7. So we know overall he's playing good stuff. Yeah, he's uh, very confident, isn't he? And uh, would uh, be, come as no surprise if he went very deep again this week. This kind of event suits him. 12. He seems very willing to be here. That well, sounds obvious, but more so perhaps than all the other players. Not on a colour very easily, if at all, to pot one, that is. There are the crowds. I mean, it, they are good crowds already. Uh, uh, often it really builds up into a crescendo at the weekend when you're sure to get a fantastic crowd here at the Temper Drum. But uh, already it seems there's a lot in. Yeah, it's a unique arena, isn't it? And you see that obviously this is the main table in the middle, but there's the six tables around the sides as well. Yeah, couldn't quite get to the potting angle there. They have played three times before, and it is 3-0 to Trump. In fact, uh, Kleckers has only won two frames against him. Most recently, they met in the Wuhan Open, the opening round there. That was played in the UK. Trump won 5-1 a few months ago. It's Neil Robertson in the background, another player looking for, desperately looking for some results, because at the moment, it looks like he'll be having to qualify for the World Championship if things don't turn around. So... We've already seen a couple of big names exit, Mark Selby and Sean Murphy. Just shows you these early matches, top players can be vulnerable. <coughs> but yeah, the, this tournament, the venue is one thing, but it's made by the audience as well. Such a respectful, enthusiastic audience here in Berlin. Since the tournament was uh, first held here in 2011, it's been one of the most popular destinations for the tour will they see their own produce a big shot tonight yeah 
Yeah, the irony is that the format's been changed to incorporate more players at the venue, leading players, but already we lost a few earlier, didn't we, with Mark Selby and Sean Murphy coming unstuck, beaten on the outside tables where it may not be so easy to focus the mind out there, but it's the same for everybody in this event. It is a unique event, as Dave said, and I think we like it. It's different. All building up to, like I say, a wonderful weekend here in Berlin. Well, he just glanced off the second red. It's OK. That could have uh, been worse with a fuller contact. Click is just trying to, I'm sure, iron out a few early butterflies here. Of course, he comes here having beaten Jack Lazowski just last week in the World Open qualifiers. He beat him 5-2, a terrific win against a top player. Such a star-studded lineup, though, even tonight with Luca Purcell playing and Neil Robertson, as you pointed out, Mark Allen all in action tonight. So if you are in the audience, you wouldn't always know quite where to look with all these top players here. If you're on the middle table, you're a long way from the crowds, but if you're uh, on one of the outside tables, the crowd are almost on top of you there. So it's a very different experience. Sometimes the middle table doesn't always get the uh, applause for a great shot or a big break that it might do if it was just the one table. Anyhow, here we are, and we're looking forward to the week. Clickers can be a little slow. I mean, for somebody who I don't see no reason why he should be a slow player, but he can get a little bogged down. The average shot times are against him usually. But he can play, as you, Dave, pointed out. I also remember that victory he had against Mark Selby in one of the home nations where he barely missed a pot. But that was a poor one. He hasn't settled yet. This is why I think the start is important. If Trump can, you know, assert himself early on, it could be a difficult night for Kleckers. One. So second scoring chance for Judd Trump. He actually uh, didn't make it last year. He lost to Mark Davis in qualifying, but has been excused that because of the extension to seven days this year. One thing he has been doing Six. this season, apart from winning, is scoring. Of course, they go together, but 57 centuries, way out in front in terms of Seven. that this season. Yeah, I'm not sure what he did for his week off, but clearly you only have to go back uh, a week and a day when he was beaten in that final to Ronnie O'Sullivan in the World Grand Prix, so maybe a few days away from the game might have sharpened him up a touch. Because he had a long spell with the Masters previous to that. There was Noah Sullivan there. For, uh, he won both of those events. Yeah, I think Judd has actually been to Morocco. I saw some pictures on his Instagram. So he's just had a little break because it is a very busy period coming up now. He's going to be in every tournament. 20. Run through there, pushing a red out. Looking to get as much table time and uh, obviously stopping Clickers from getting any at the, uh, at the flip side of the coin. He is very good, though, against these sort of opponents. I mean, I know that he can be vulnerable in the early rounds. Like Dave said, he didn't play it last year, he didn't get through. Of course, the other thing to say is we've got these best of nines, which we don't see as often as all that now. A lot of the seven frame events. 29. A longer match with an interval. Clickers needs to try and get into this match early. Well, he's landed on the, the middle red Five, through six. the gap. I think he's just off straight. Seven. 
Well, he does have a great record in the tournament. He's won more matches than anyone else, made more centuries. He's been in three finals, won it twice. He's been in a semi-final, five quarter-finals. He's made a maximum. So put it all together, it's one of his favourite venues, one of his favourite tournaments. 44. 45. And the crowds love him as well. It's just that I'm sure tonight <laughs> he might not have quite as much support as normal. That's inevitable, but this frame, and he's worked these well, he's looking over now. It's a beautiful shot there, just to nudge all the reds and the crest into the, the pink and the green as well. And now everything is there, it's over, as you say. 52. So a swift start. We're not quite 10 minutes into the frame, but it's done. 53. As far as a, who's going to win it is concerned. 50. A couple of close frames went against him in that final 60. with O'Sullivan, although I don't think either player was at their best, but Ronnie fought really hard and was the deserved winner. That's all gone. It's on to the next one now. Of course, Trump's won three ranking titles this season, three in a row, in fact. Chance to open with a century here. 68. I watched this afternoon. I thought the pockets and it's maybe a day one thing. They looked maybe a little more generous than some of the tournaments this season. That may just be first day with the new cloths. I think you're right. I thought the same. I didn't think they were quite as generous as one or two of the other events we've seen. There were a couple of events in Asia earlier in the season which pockets were I thought, oversized. But you say it could be the opening day. And then manageable along the cushions, I think, is the key. So, as I say, he's well out in front on in terms of centuries this season. 83. With the chance maybe to get to 100 by the end of it. He's on 57 now. 84. And this could well be 58. And the perfect start, really. Second scoring opportunity. Just illustrating what Kleckers is up against. You might think, well, the top Eight player nine. might have an off day, but the signs are Judge Trump is not going to, which means, of course, Kleckers himself is going to have to produce similar. 92. 96. So, first frame. Judd Trump with the blue for a century. Superb start. I mean, it's a terrific break, the way that he's made this. Not all of Judd Trump's century breaks are quite as immaculate positionally as this one, but he's barely got out of position one. once Seven. during the course of it. Lovely start. Yeah, very impressive. Bit of a statement that, starting off with 114. Judd Trump hits the ground running remember it's best of nine to reach round two trump leads cleckers one nil and there is a little subplot for trump this week in fact it's not it's not little it's big in terms of money 150,000, the bet victor european series bonus he at the moment is in pole position to win that the last event is the welsh open but he could actually wrap it up here because he's over 100,000 ahead of second place barry hawkins so We'll monitor that as the week goes on, but it could be a very profitable week one way or another for Trump. He's already earned 571,000 this season as it stands. He's off Six. again, isn't he? Goodness, straight away. Seven. And already the Reds look absolutely superb to carry on where he left off. It's a great start. Eight. 
I think he knows what to expect here. If you're a new player to the temper drum, and many would be coming here for the first time, they might think, goodness, this is a little different to anything else I've been ever played at before. But Judd knows the score with all his success. Enjoying all the play. And uh, they're seeing starting well. I mean, he played some really good stuff last week. He didn't final, as we were saying. I mean, there wasn't even a century break 21. in that final with Ronnie O'Sullivan. You could probably have had some odds that in this day and age, not one. It's a fabulous shot. He's got his uh, cannon play around the, the bottom of the bunch off to a tee already 20. in this match. Yeah, this is uh, already looking a little ominous, but Kleckers has to be watchful. Maybe one mistake out of nowhere could let him in. A few of the big hitters, they have fallen away a bit this season for whatever 36. reason, but Trump, who maybe last season didn't enjoy his best campaign, it's all turned around for him in a big way. So he's, we know he's feeling good coming here. No real concerns about his game. That makes him even more dangerous. Yeah, I think some of the players that have fallen away might just take some inspiration from Trump because he fell away a little bit um, from 44. about this time of the year onwards until the end of the season, last season. And he's overcut that one, and that's just about the first Trump, 44. significant mistake that he's made. It's a good start, but he's not in any way put the frame safe yet. If he's overcut this. But Judd did fall away at the World Championships. Very few people tipped him to do well, and you know he went out first round at the Crucible. But then this season has been a totally different ball game. Ah uh, well, this is what I was saying. The chance might come, but he was unable to pop the initial ball. It wasn't an easy opening red. I think it only just went. But as you say, you've got to take these chances. I think it's a myth to, to think what? that if you're playing a, a Judd Trump or an O'Sullivan or any of the top players, that you don't get any chances because, of course, you do. It'd be very unusual for you not to get a shot. That's a rarity. But you don't get that many opportunities against leading players. I think we had a match last week where Ronnie O'Sullivan beat Ding Jun Wee. 6-1 and Ding didn't get all that much to go at, but that is quite unusual. Yeah, just looking at Klecker's there, he's already looking Nine. a little bit fed up because, as I say, chance might not have come, it did, and I guess there's more pressure on it because they might be scant this evening. Kind of felt I had to get this and he didn't. Not quite right on his next colour, though, here. I mean, he might just knock the blue in. Which I, I think he would be keen on doing. But deciding that he's going to take the pink round the angles. Yeah, he just made it, although positionally not right either. So the frame has not been put away yet in two attempts, unless he can keep this break alive with the red to middle. 15. shot so plenty of points on the table but very little to go at here I think for Lucas Kleckers just on the Luca Braselli won the opener against Ishpreet Singh Chada, but Chada's won the second there, so a pretty quick start on table two. Remember, tables one to four live on Discovery Plus. Steve Maguire's won the first against Joe O'Connor.
Yes, I had it in my mind that Luca might have a good week. You know, he has been incredibly quiet, as we know, the world champion. Playing here in mainland Europe, I figured that this could be a good week for him, but Ishpreet Singh Chado actually is a good player. That win over Bingham last week was a good one. There he is, the world champion. Really like to see more of him. I, it was a brilliant moment when he won the title. He hasn't done a great deal since, it has to be said, since Shanghai, the Invitational, he got to the final. <laughs> Nothing since. Anyway, good red from Kleckers. Well, it was because that wasn't straightforward. Bear in mind, for a frame and a half, he's been up against it. So he's in. What can he do? That's his first pot of the evening. Hard work, I think everyone recognises that. As I say, he got to a quarter-final last season in a ranking event. That was a personal best. And he's 76 in the world. This is the end of his two-year card. So he has to be in the top 64 at the end of the season. So ranking points are what he's looking for in the remaining events. He's qualified for the World Open. That's a big money tournament, so that will help. But... Every event is important. Six. Of course, the World Championship will be, as ever, the, the decisive one. Played two good rest shots in a row there, the red and that blue. Well, Seven. it's a shame he's played that because if he was going to go too far on that, he might as well have tried to just get the four reds open and chance his arm a little bit. But now that he hasn't finished nicely on the colour, those reds are completely awkward now that's where they're placed so he could have taken a risk took the cue into the reds he's not really going anywhere is he yet which uh, seven. looks like he's given a chance for Judd to go 2-0 up here but just a couple of pots into that right corner yeah I mean Trump's got a good lead hasn't he already 52 so not much more to do really if you say for him so that was a definite chance for Kleckers just to get involved but it didn't really <laughs> 60 in front so already a snooker needed you might fancy rolling this down the cushion as well this uh, red Judd Trump and that would be end of frame this drops down there see what they're doing well they might not be that tight, but that's not going in anywhere. Well, there's some hope here. At least the frame isn't over yet. One snooker required. But it's worth saying, whatever happens tonight, this is a big deal for him, Kleckers, to play in the temper drone. It's really brought the fans out. Germany's interesting. There's so many fans, we know that, from German Eurosport. Still, participation is not that high, but people love to watch snooker and obviously delighted to see one of their own playing in such a great venue as this. I know Rolf Kalb, our colleague at German Eurosport, is uh, the MC as well. Very excited to be commentating this evening. Well, it's one snooker providing Kleckers can take high value colours with presumably either all of the reds or you'll leave one on the table. But he must pot the pink from this red and take blacks just to stay close enough so, so it's only one snooker. One. Just while he goes about this, Graham Dot has uh, won the first against Ashley Carty. Graham was uh, runner-up to Mark Williams here back in 2018. It was 9-1 to Mark. That's when he was, of course, right back in form. But Graham has played in this wonderful setup when it is one table, when all attention is on the two players. Seven. As has Stephen Maguire. He lost to Ronnie O'Sullivan in 2012. Maguire's won up to Joe O'Connor. They're second-round matches. They've come through qualifying already. Of course, this is a first round match. Eight. The 
yes, because it's just one snooker that he needs. He doesn't have to just uh, leave one red on. He can actually take all of the reds with high-value colours and try and get the snooker on the colours if he wishes to. Just often when there's six or eight points required in fouls, or even more than that, 15. to leave the red on for the free ball aspect, but he hasn't really got to go down that route when it's one snooker. He might feel that it's easy to get the snooker on the colours and take the red blacks while he can. Yeah, that's what he's doing. He's not uh, saving one red. Just going to pop a few more balls and then try and lay a snooker 24. on the colours. And they didn't want to finish quite there. He wanted to finish in, in bulk, yes. And uh, there might be a, a snooker that he can get, but I'm not sure it was quite the plan to finish where he has. He could try and roll up behind the brown ball, so that's not the worst idea if he gets it. Well, he's got a, quite a good snooker there. He would have liked the yellow ball to have a gap behind it so that he could slide past it. But this has got to be hit. It's not simple. No, and the other thing is none of the other colours are safe. They're all in play. So if Trump were to give the points away, then there would be a chance for Kleckers and it would be uh, quite a turning point early on because it was looking for all the world like 2-0. Yeah, good shot. Just like if that yellow had a bounced a few inches away from that cushion, it would be even more of a concern for Trump. It's coming around three cushions here. It's a very difficult oh. shot and he hasn't hit it. So. Seven. There won't be a miss called, and the balls mostly are still in open play. Obviously, the black would be a slight issue at the end if there was a clearance. For now, Judd Trump has just been pegged back in this frame. So, interesting this way this frame has changed. That's a good shot as well. All of a sudden, it's been brought back to life, this frame. Clack is in a snooker. If this works out well, he could push the yellow round the table and actually get the black away from the cushion here. Goodness me. Well, every part of that shot went right, except for the, the yellow gun over the middle. He's a little unlucky there, I think. He, he wants the green as well, though, because he hit the, the black earlier, Trump. Just a bit unfortunate there, I felt, to leave that over the middle. Five. Yeah, it was a really good snooker he laid, but 
It's going to be a case of needing two more. And if Trump pots the brown, then there's surely no way back. So 2-0 it is after all that. Nine. Fourteen. Here we go. Trick shot. It's looking good. It's looking very good. <laughs> well, it was in the balance for a moment when Kleck has got the snooker, but he left that yellow over the middle, and Judd Trump has done the rest. The twice champion on top, leading 2-0. This is the scene here in Berlin at the Tempodrome this evening. Packed house and uh, the local man in a bit spot of bother early on. 2 0 down, Lucas friend. Kleckers Judge to Judd Trump. Trump. Did get the snooker he needed there, but Trump took the frame all the same. The winner plays Matthew Stevens in the last 64. Some of the last 64 matches have already been played. Uh, for instance, Sam Craigie is in the last 32, isn't he? So there's a couple of rounds ahead of this match. This is the last the round of 1 2 8 still, the first match of the event for these two. against Judd Trump is it's very difficult to keep him out for long periods whatever however good your safety game is you know there's always a chance you're gonna knock one in and and get going to keep him quiet you've got to be either watertight in your own safety or just pop all the balls before he does once though he doesn't get in there so he's in with something to go at first in this third frame, which he needs, Kleckers. Yeah, you feel it, it kind of needs to happen soon, probably now, just for his own confidence, if he can put something together here. Obviously, a lot of events one. he would come in in round one. It would be in a qualifying setup, often with basically no one there. This is completely different. This is where he wants to be, of course but it adds its own pressure. He wants to perform for the home crowd. We've seen that with various players in various parts of the world. So let's see if it clicks here. Got back on tour through the Q School at the start of last season. Four. Through the final event, actually, the third event. Big Ross Muir in a decider in the last round. It was all in the balance, but he made it through. But as I say now, this is two-year card at the end of this season going to come to an end so he's looking to keep his place on tour to avoid having to Five. go back to Q school so important that he does take this chance early with a view to getting the frame back. 12.
a very positive shot. He deserves something good to happen from it. And really, he's not been left an easy ball, but he really hammered that and tried to get the, the red into open play. But he's got to probably play the red up by the blue into the green pocket, which is a big shot. I can't see any other meaningful shot that he can play. He's probably got to take it on. And what is he looking at? This is a plant. If there isn't, surely he's got to play this red into the top right. He is. Well, it's quite straight as well. It would be a test of his queuing. We hit it quite well. Uh, Lucas I must say, 20. from the angle we had, it looked as if it was on its way to the pocket. Yeah, I thought so. I thought he struck it really well, actually. But wouldn't you know it? It's <laughs> over, over the opposite corner. First frame, Sanderson Lamb against Neil Robertson. A long frame, but Lamb has taken it. This looked good, didn't it? It did. It jumped a little bit. I noticed that. Maybe a slight kick or a poor contact, but even then it hit the right jaw. Went close to the, the other pocket as well. Again, that wasn't far away. He was slightly Sometimes hampered free. by the green. Yeah, I don't think that helped him. That uh, where he had his bridge hand a little awkwardly. Well, fraction too straight. He's got to force this, which means you can miss these. Had he been rolling it in with a better angle, I don't think he would have missed it. Just on Sanderson Lamb, by the way, as we see the replay. It was his 30th birthday yesterday, so it's been a big couple of days for him. Taking on Neil Robertson now in this wonderful arena. He's to miss one or two, Joe, doesn't he? Yes, he's got a great start taking the first two frames, but not, not quite as dynamic as he was at the start of this match. So more evidence that uh, not everything's going in now for Judd. So Lucas Kleck has got to pick up the signs. Yeah, I mean, for a frame and a half, he, he barely had a look in. But suddenly, he's getting a lot of table time. And I guess the concern for Trump is eventually he's going to make something of it. One.
It's one of those arenas as well. It, you, we've seen players before. You can, if you're not careful, you spend a lot of time sort of looking around. So obviously, you need to focus on your own match. A lot going on. I think what's nice about this arena, and we have spoken about it quite a lot, is that it's it's completely unique to, you know, as soon as you saw a picture of this place, you'd know straight away which event it was by the surroundings, by the iconic building. At the moment, though, it's not quite happening for the German. Another opportunity not taken. Yeah, he's leaving himself quite a few shots like this that are missable. They're not quite regulation and just adding a bit of pressure. You can see the disappointment as he returned to his seat there because he is getting chances now. That's, that's the thing. One. Very good red. Now, does he go into the four reds directly above the black while the chance is there? I suspect he will. No, he's decided not to. So playing on the loose red, he will need those reds in play, of course. Maybe he felt that Eight. keep him a little close to the side cushion. This is the opening red, very well played. But his mind will be focused on those Nine. Four reds in the middle, and he's got to get them in play. There is another red by the pink, which seems to be possible. And there, Ishpreet Singh Charter levelling up at 2-2 with Luca Purcell. So they're already at the interval after 16. about 45 minutes play. Is this a chance to go to these reds? I think it is. Little nudge. He's had a long look at a red to the right corner. It looks really tight. Does the red go? And, and can he get enough of the red? It must be... Do you know, I think that will go. I don't think it's a full pocket, but he can get to it. 24. Everything was at close quarters on that shot. Well, if you get this frame from here as well, it's starting to decidedly one-sided this match. 31. Given that this is the frame where Kleckers has had a couple of opportunities, which he hasn't taken. 32. Yeah, it's been a case of if Trump has made errors, they haven't been punished. Thirty-nine. And that means you can basically forget about them. Forty. So the lead up to thirty eight shot from Trump. Fifty three. He's got access to the red by the pink, but even then, I'm sure he played on one of the other two. It's not an easy shot from where he's got to cue it from to pop this. Uh, overcut it as he did a shot to the other corner pocket earlier in the Joe match. Trump, 53. So he's in a good position, but again, not 
over the line in frame three. Probably feels that from the chance he had, he should have converted that. I don't think he's got a great angle on the black to get across to the red. I think he's just off straight. To screw back and across. He's played it well, although, as you can see, he still has a tough shot to follow it up on the red. It's another one of these, isn't it? As I say, you know, he's missable. But he hasn't missed it. Nine. That's a beautiful shot. Now, that's the best he's hit. And it looks as if he's got an angle to either move the red or land in behind the red. So that was a good shot he's played. I think he's trying to just nudge it into play. If the angle is just there. I think he'd like to be a bit straighter because the ideal way to get the red out is cushion first and push it into the middle of the table. But if he hasn't quite got the angle to do it, it makes it difficult. Means he might have to play him behind the red instead. See how it goes. Yeah, that was uh, very much second choice to play him behind it, and he didn't mean to kiss it either. 16. So the rest shot could be the deciding factor in frame three. How far away the balls were apart. One. It's been a story of opportunities not taken in the last couple of frames. He knows it. And it seems every time he does miss, and it, as you say, it wasn't easy, but every time he does miss, he seems to leave something on. That's the other thing. Trump 21 in front is yellow and green. Four. There you see from that, that uh, point of view, and it's very awkward, very difficult shot. Six. So this is the one to extend his lead to 3-0. Three. Nil. Well, he started with a century and he was nicely in in frame two. Then he started to make a few errors, but Kleckers has not been able to ultimately punish them. So Judd Trump looking comfortable at 3-0. 13. Four. <laughs> Perfect on the black. And perfectly placed in the match, you've got to say. 3 0, OK, not flawless, but certainly the better player of the two on the night. And Judd Trump just two frames away from round two of the German Masters. He leads Germany's own Lucas Kleckers by three frames to nil. So it's 3 0 to Judd Trump. One each, uh, Mark Allen and Manasawin in Fet Malaykel. Neil Robertson has leveled up with uh, Sanderson Lamb. I think he had a century there. I'll let you know for sure in a moment. 2-2, Luca Brussel, Ishpreet Singh Chada on the four main tables. And then on the other table, Steve Maguire and Joe O'Connor, one each. Graham Dot, one nil up, and Ashley Carty. Jamie Clark and Scott Donaldson, one apiece. Busy night here at the Tempodrome. And remember, this tournament's been extended to seven days. Previously, it was five.
Really, you want to be here Saturday. I mean, that's obvious, but to experience the atmosphere of the semi-final when it's just one table. Even the referees, they get the great walk on, don't they? It's a brilliant atmosphere for Saturday and Sunday. It's a packed house. And that's where this tournament really sort of comes into its own. I think to get the tournament extended to seven days is not easy because there's a lot of big pop concerts and gigs and all kinds of things take place in the Temperdrum all year round. And of course, it isn't just seven days. It's some days either side of it, which they have to book it for, for the rigging and the de-rigging on either side. So he, it's not what? easy to get this venue for all this period of time, but they've managed it. Good shot to start with, but not perfectly on the black. Just as we see the replay, yeah, Robertson had 112, so he did indeed have a century there in frame two. Big shot here for Trump already in this frame. Yeah, Neil Robertson's form is strange, isn't Eight. it? We know how much he's struggling, enough's been made of it, but he seems to still be knocking in centuries, even in matches he loses. It's the kind of the other part of his game that seems to be suffering. Where the close frames he's losing a lot of those. But uh, as we say with Jardy, he didn't uh, play that well for a few months last season. And if Neil Robertson can get it back, we know what he's capable of. But he might have to qualify for the crucible. Wouldn't necessarily want to be the seed. If he did qualify, he'd be facing him. No, I mean, it's like a hand grenade in the drawer, isn't it? If that happens, we'll find out. He might win a tournament before then. You don't know. A lot of people hoping he does come back to form. Now, Judd Trump nicely 17. in, already here, looking to press on to 4-0. A couple of frames where Kleckers did have chances there, but the fact he's lost them, bang under it again. Had a good shot there. He had the back up red to middle, but put him a screw and right hand reverse side. Taking him on this red, exactly what he wanted. 23. Now he might just top the cue ball off the cushion into the bunch. Doesn't have to play it, but there's a way of getting the reds open. He's playing it because he had a, a red out in open play to land on. Whatever happened to the Reds in the pack? 30. Thirty-eight. Thirty-nine. Well, the red directly below the pink it's pots to the right corner. Forty-six. open space through to the pocket as you saw from that low angle. Pink is not available. 47. So not anything particularly straightforward he can land on unless he decides the pink parts but Running it through onto a couple of reds. That's not ideal where he's finished. 54. know what to do on the black. I suppose he could have tried to go into the reds again, 
I thought he felt he'd land on something to the right middle, but it seems that he's very awkward now. It might be they'd have to play safe. And of course, Judd, of all people, is, is reluctant to end a break if he doesn't feel he has to. If he is playing safe, clearly there's no shot, knowing his style of play. But also, a safety shot is not easy to find. Not a worthwhile shot anyway. Fifty-four. Handy break and a good lead. You could see the frustration though, couldn't you? Because he's, he's not one of these players who likes to sort of win it with a couple of fifties and a safety in between. He likes to just completely obliterate the frame with a big break. But sometimes you have to be patient. And crucially, of course, not open the door. A player's trailing, they need to be thrown some sort of bone, but can't afford to do that. He, he knows about Kleckers from last week, beating Lazowski. Obviously, Trump's would have noticed that result for sure. Quite a good shot, that. That is quite a good shot because he was in a bit of trouble there. Steered the cue ball around the angles. It was a risk because he didn't know exactly where the Reds would finish, but he did play it well. But not well enough. Difficult man to keep quiet, isn't he, Judd? Goodness. Hard to restrain him and stop him potting balls. I think the lighting is a little different around these tables, but Judd seems to see all these angles perfectly. Green. Green ball. Played into an area. I think he's on the, the right hand red of the three below the pink. Four. So not a huge amount to do to extend his lead even further. So it's Five. an extremely one-sided feel to this match. Just a red and a colour, another frame. Goes the way of Judd Trump. Twelve. Yes, of course, so many people came Five. tonight hoping to see Lucas Klecker certainly put up a good account himself, maybe even win, but Judd Trump, if he does come through, it seems likely now, will himself get a lot of support here. He's always supported this event. He was the first player to make a maximum. There's only been three. Of course, he's won it twice, albeit once in the lockdown in Milton Keynes. 19. Much of the red to go out there, was the, but he's knocked it in, and that stops any playing on. So it's going to be 4 0 
And it's a long, long way back from here for Lucas Kleckers, whose highest break tonight, only 31. You can see the disappointment. He be, would have been so excited about playing tonight. And it, of course, is a, a big deal to walk out here at the Tempodrome on home soil, but just hasn't been able so far to produce the sort of snooker he needs to. And he's also up against one of the most confident players in the game right now, of course. Third three. 34. Well, exactly. I mean, he's very sharp, isn't he? The man that Lucas Kleckers is playing is on the back of a good run last week, beating the final in Leicester of the World Grand Prix. A few days away, wouldn't have taken away that sharpness. He's 40. fully match fit, winning matches all season. He's been in such 41. good form. So it's just another day at the office for him, isn't it? Big occasion for Lucas Kleckers. Another match, an important match for Judd Trump. 46. 47. Well, we may see a few shots here now at the end of the frame that will uh, delight the crowd. Here's one. <laughs> Here's one. It's a terrific shot, isn't it? I mean, it's exactly what he played. Not, not uh, any applause, but he, he played it with topspin to come. I mean, it's, a, it's an amazingly 56. good shot to play. There's more control in that than you might think. Arced the cue ball and took it around three cushions for the yellow from the black. It's a shot I think he invented. I don't think I've ever seen anyone else play it. So he's breezing through, isn't he? 63. Yeah, there was just a question mark in frame two, wasn't there? When Clare needed, but Trump got over that. And the further in front he goes, the more confident he feels. 4-0 to Judd Trump. A long, long way back for Lucas Kleckers, Germany's representative on the main tour, playing here in Berlin. But it's going to the form book as the players head to the interval. Trump leads 4-0. And when they return in 15 minutes, he'll need one more to advance to the second round. So the players are back. Judd Trump looking to kill this off. 4 0. He leads one more needed to advance to round two, where Matthew Stevens awaits. Kleckers obviously right now just wants to avoid the whitewash, at least show his home fans how well he can play. His highest break still only 31. A pot success 74%. And those numbers, I guess, tell their own story. The other story really is that when Trump has made mistakes, they haven't really been punished. Couple into the middle pockets already, but uh, this time has given Kleckers an opportunity here. Yeah, let's see if now, and sometimes you do see this, a player kind of thinks they're already out. So maybe this is the moment Kleckers could put something together. Oh, that red just sort of struggled in. It certainly did. I wasn't entirely sure it would drop, but as you say, just just made it. But he's also absolutely dead straight on the blue. I mean, that is as straight as you'll get on a blue to middle. It's 
so he can't do anything with that. Just leaves it down the middle channel across the, the spots. He won his first uh, German national title when he was just 17, Lucas Kleckers. That was a Six. decade ago. And uh, he got on the tour through the Q School initially, 2017. He wasn't handy the place. He earned it like everybody else. Ah, uh, well, it's just not happening, I'm afraid. Six. He's a better player than this. As you say, you know, went over Jack Lisowski, a terrific win over Mark Selby in the past, but you know, if you didn't hadn't seen him play before, you mightn't think he's very good, but he's a lot better than the performance tonight. One. Yeah, I was just looking back at that first season, he actually beat Neil Robertson at the Riga Masters on TV. That was the first tournament he played in, and you'd think, wow, you know, this is uh, Someone's arrived here, and then he didn't win another match all season. So it seems a bit Jekyll and Hyde, some of his results. And tonight, this performance, as you say, well below what he's capable of. Three. I'm sure he would agree with that himself. little flick on the blue ball which stopped the cue ball from Six. getting in behind the ready played on. He's got to avoid that red on the right cushion here. It's quite difficult to, to avoid. He's managed it. Seven. Now perhaps into the bunch. So if this black goes in, it could be a question of landing in well, he might Edge off the bunch, not very, not very much of them, and that's well played. Although it just could be that there's a red to the right middle available. Well, all sorts of cheers from around and about. Uh, Ishpreet Singh Chada, by the way, three two up on Luca Brussel on table two, and uh, Mark Allen. Trailing 2 1 to Manasar in Vet Malaykul. So a couple of big hitters trailing. 15. Yeah, that's not quite worked out. Not finished nicely on this black. But in it goes, nonetheless. Trump. It's what he's so good at. If he does, if his cue ball runs a bit loose at times, he's such a, a great potter. He can recover. Yeah, so if you get to the left side of the table off one of the bulk colours, he would be able to put one of the half of reds to the right corner. But he's also looking at that red up the table into that fairly acute middle pocket. And these are all right when you're right behind them. If you're not right behind these shots, pocket to aim at. It's OK, I think. He's run right. the cube through a little bit for the blue or pink. But you can never afford to hit these with too much 26. pace. But now, goodness, what a chance. Look at these reds. They're in such positions. Thirty-one. Thirty-two. 
think one of his many great attributes, Judd Trump, is that he treats every tournament with the same respect. So that you come here just wanting to win it like all the others. And of course, if he does, it'll be four ranking titles this season. 38. Whatever he sort of lost last year, he's refound, hasn't he, in a big way. 39. I'm not sure if there's a plant to the left corner with those four reds. Lots of applause, as you're hearing all the time around all the different tables. I think the top red of the four also pops to the right corner. Seven. Well, you'd be uh, a little surprised if Kleckers came out of the table still able to win this match with this break-ins because it's a wonderful chance to convert a 4 0 mid session interval into 53. a whitewash. Yeah, I'm sure it was his dream to play at the Temper Drone, but the reality is it was a very tough draw. Judd Trump's just been so consistent this season. So hard to beat, full stop. Kleckers has had chances, has not been able to take them. And he's a couple of Six balls from being whitewashed. Six to go. So Judd Trump, he's going to be through to round two. And now the question is, can he finish with the second century? Change of hands. That last red obviously is the uh, the ball that's going to be key to making this entry. Disappointment for Kleckers. He can play better than this. It was a big occasion. But I think that first frame set the tone really. Trump just came out and played a great opening frame. He tries to bring this red off, which he's done. So now the century very much on. Yeah, to play that good recovery shot early on, but again, it's been a very measured break thereafter. Never really thought that Judd was going to lose this match before it started, but I figured that Lucas Kleckers could give him a good game. It hasn't happened. Decided, but like I said, I didn't necessarily think it was sure to be like that. He looked a bit sort of downcast for the most part of it, Kleckers. Yeah. Frame wasn't he got the snooker and he left the yellow on eventually and that almost felt like that was his sort of chance to really land a blow. 93. So he started with a century and this blue means he will have finished with one. He's 960th in his career as he moves towards a thousand and moves into round two here in Berlin. It would be a tough draw for anyone, including a player on home soil. He had a lot of support, but Judd Trump has finished in style. 115 to wrap it up. He's whitewashed Lucas Kleckers in 71 minutes here tonight. The crowd generous in their applause for Trump, despite the disappointment that the local man is out in round one. Judd Trump, twice champion at the German Masters, is the winner by five frames to nil.